I don't understand why that day was so different. I... One minute he's here and people see him and the next he's gone. We've all heard parents say, I looked away for just a minute. But in some cases, that minute of panic continues for hours, days, or even years. I kept an eye on this case when it originally broke, but thought that law enforcement was close to solving it. This year, we found out that close just doesn't cut it, and this case needs more help. It's time to turn on the searchlight for Michael Vaughn. Welcome back to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for caring about these cases like I do. A very close friend of the channel is actually facing some medical challenges right now. And I know this is a case that she's very passionate about. So when you see this, please know that you helped inspire today's episode. And I'm hoping that you're getting through everything okay and that you're back on the road to good health very, very soon. Michael Joseph Vaughn called Monkey by his loving family, was born to Tyler Vaughn and Brandy Neal on June 24th, 2016. Five years later, the family, along with the new addition, Aria, affectionately called Buggy, were living in a neighborhood near Southwest 9th Street in Fruitland, Idaho. Fruitland is a city along the Snake and Payette Rivers in Payette County, Idaho. It lies along U.S. Route 95 in the Treasure Valley of southwest Idaho, about 50 miles west of Boise, on the border with Oregon. Fruitland is named after apple orchards that surround the community, and its slogan is the Big Apple of Idaho. As of the 2010 census, the city had a total population of over 4,500 people. It was a warm day on July 27, 2021, and Brandy had worked several days in a row without any time off. Luckily, she had a few days off coming up. She was looking forward to some relaxation and spending time with her children, but she had another work day to push through. As she left for work, Michael said, I love you, Mama. And she promised to come home in time for them to play and that she would be there to tuck him into bed that night. Unfortunately, that wouldn't quite happen that way. Michael was a high energy kid, part of the reason for his family nickname of Monkey. His father, Tyler, stayed at home watching both the children. Michael spent a lot of the day playing his Nintendo Switch. When Brandy called to check in on everyone around 4 p.m., things seemed normal. A few hours later, Tyler went to the bedroom to check on Aria and change her diaper, leaving Michael alone playing in the living room. After changing Aria, Tyler called and ordered a pizza and walked back into the living room. That's when he realized that Michael was gone. Michael had previously wandered off on occasion, but was usually found close by. Tyler hurried outside, thinking Michael might be looking for other children to play with, but after a quick search, he just couldn't find him. He called Brandy, and he called the police. When the mother received the call, she immediately left work to return home. She met police officers at the park near their home, and it was clear that the search for Michael was already in full swing. Neighbors started piecing together their sightings. Between 6 and 7 p.m., they saw Michael in his yard. Some saw him on the street talking to other neighbors. He was also seen near his home walking east. They all said that Michael didn't seem scared, but they didn't really keep track of him, and soon Michael was gone. He has wandered a few times, but it doesn't make sense, his mother Brandy would say. As soon as word spread through the community, many came out to help. Some searched the town, while others searched fields and storm drains. Everything was checked, from trash cans to park bathrooms. If a five-year-old could hide in it, that area was searched. At 8.20 p.m., the first missing and endangered child alert went out. Unfortunately, an Amber Alert couldn't be issued in this case because it didn't meet the correct criteria. In Idaho, the very first stipulation is that law enforcement knows that an abduction has occurred. And with the witness statements, 
There just wasn't enough to make that determination. Over the next week, search efforts ran around the clock. The Fruitland Police Department was joined by the National Guard, the FBI, Idaho State Police, and Mountain Search and Rescue, as well as other law enforcement agencies, all converged on the small town. In total, there were 13 different law enforcement agencies that conducted searches. At a press conference on August 4th, Fruitland PD explained just how deep these searches were. Nearly 200 homes and their properties were searched with all of those residents being questioned. 200 trash cans were examined, canals were drained, as well as irrigation ditches, and even a septic tank in an area was pumped because searchers became concerned that Michael could have fallen into it. However, nothing was found. CCTV footage from both residential and business cameras were taken and combed through. 163 tips were also assigned out to numerous investigators most of those were cleared quickly. 3,000 acres of farmland were searched. Drones were used, aircraft, scent dogs, boats and kayaks, even paragliders were used in the search for Michael. The efforts were just not turning up any trace of the missing five-year-old. Our goal is to find Michael. We've called on a considerable number of highly trained people and specialized resources who've come here to Fruitland to join the search, said Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff. Michael deserves every effort we can make to find him, and that's what we're doing, he concluded. For the next three months, search efforts continued. Brandy and Tyler worked to keep Michael's name and face on everyone's minds. How many times can the human heart break? I don't even know how many times mine does in a day, Brandy told a reporter from KBOI. The small community grieved with the family. Some hung posters while others searched. One group even organized a motorcycle ride to spread awareness. Everyone participating met at the Fruitland Community Park to pray that Michael would be found, and all of their motorcycles were decorated with blue ribbons, Michael's favorite color. In November of 2021, it was announced that because so little was uncovered during the searches, law enforcement had finally come to believe that Michael had been abducted. The family took lie detector tests and were ruled out as suspects. A campaign was started using semi-truck trailers that showed Michael's information on them as they made trips around the state. They did everything they could to find this little boy. Michael's disappearance and the grief his family was facing was noticed by Governor Brad Little of Idaho, and on April 27, 2022, he signed Monkey's Law into effect. The law established a new endangered missing person alert system that runs parallel to an AMBER alert. This type of alert will help to catch those cases that don't meet the strict criteria for a full AMBER alert, like Michael's case didn't. In the summer of 2022, word was spreading in the community that investigators were back looking into the area that Michael was last seen, and on November 11th, 2022, it was announced that there was a break in the case. A credible tip came in stating that the remains of Michael could be found buried in the backyard of a local house on Red Wing Street. When officers arrived at Brandy and Tyler's home that morning, they expected to hear another update on their son's case. Instead, they were told that a woman named Sarah Wandra had been arrested for being involved in Michael's abduction, and she had been charged with failure to report a death. However, at that time, Michael's remains had not actually been found. Brandy and Tyler's lives were thrown into turmoil with this new information. Brandy even remembered that when they first went out searching for Michael, she had knocked on the door of that residence where he was supposedly buried, but no one answered the door. It was just a few minutes away from their own home. The thought that he had been so close to them all this time was just too much to bear. There were others living at the home on Red Wing Street when Michael would have been abducted. Wandra's husband, Stacy, was one of them and also believed to be involved. However, he was not arrested. He was already serving a sentence in the Washington County Jail on an unrelated firearms charge. Law enforcement's next step was to excavate the backyard on Red Wing Street. Brandy and Tyler were told to stay at home and hunker down. All Brandy could do was watch the dump trucks that were loaded with dirt from the yard driving past her house on their way to a processing center to be searched for evidence. 
On December 1st, a press conference was held at which Police Chief Huff explained, although the remains of Michael Vaughn were not discovered, we strongly believe, based on evidence, that Michael was abducted and is deceased, and that his remains were buried and later moved from the property. They also announced that there were two other suspects either staying with or visiting the Wanderers when Michael went missing, and they were also being investigated. Their names are Brandon Sherliff and Adrian Lucien, both with lengthy criminal records. The pair were no longer living in Idaho, but Fruitland police said a week later that they had been in contact with both men. No further comment was made. A month later, in January of 2023, Fruitland PD announced in a Facebook post that police recovered several pieces of evidence at the Wanderers' home. Quote, some of those pieces have been sent to a private DNA lab for further analysis. That process will take time, and we're patiently waiting for the results, the Post said. In a case where law enforcement clearly seems to have the right information and are working hard to find the proof to back it up, things take an unexpected turn. Sarah Wandra was committed to a state hospital in Blackfoot on December 6, 2022. All court hearings were put on hold until her mental health evaluation could be concluded. The commitment order indicated that she was found unfit to assist in her own defense. Further proceedings would have to wait until she was found competent. The court met and discussed her status every single month until March 27, 2023, when it was agreed that she could now proceed with trial. But just as one unbelievable twist comes to a conclusion, another would shake this entire case apart. Less than a month later, on April 17th, charges against Sarah Wandra were dropped, and the request actually came from the prosecutor's office. Payette County Prosecuting Attorney Michael Duke asked that the charges be dismissed without prejudice, meaning the door is still open for charges to be filed at a later date. His reasoning was based on the Idaho Supreme Court's 2018 ruling in State v. Aikens. That case was a very similar situation. However, the woman charged with failure to notify authorities of a death was found to have her Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination violated simply by her admitting to those charges. Sarah Wandra will thankfully stay in jail as she is still facing charges from an incident in April of 2022, including aggravated assault, destruction of evidence, and possession of a controlled substance. However, none of those charges are in relation to the disappearance of Michael Vaughn. When Michael's mother, Brandy, spoke with KTVB News, she said that she was disheartened and upset, but she still has hope. Quote, I know police are steadfast in their ongoing investigation and in bringing justice for Michael. She wants anyone who was involved in her son's death to know more charges are coming. It has now been just over two years since Michael disappeared. June 24th would be his seventh birthday, and the family held a private event to remember him. The outpouring of support Brandy has received from all over the world is truly heartwarming. She has asked, quote, please keep sharing his beautiful smile, beautiful face. He's out there somewhere and we need him home. Don't forget about him. This is clearly a case where prosecutors need more information and a family needs to know where their little boy ended up. Michael Joseph Vaughn was last seen wearing a blue Minecraft t-shirt, dark blue briefs, and blue flip-flops. He was five years old at the time of his disappearance. He stood at three foot seven inches tall and weighed 50 pounds. His hair is blonde and his eyes are blue. Some people out there might not be aware that this case has taken such a big step backwards, so please share this video with friends and acquaintances in Idaho to help us re-raise awareness about this case. If you have any information in the disappearance of Michael Vaughn, the Fruitland Police Department asks that you call them at 208-452-3001. Or you can also call the Payette County Sheriff's Office at 208-642-6006, extension 0. You can also email findmichael at fruitland.org with any helpful information. If for some reason you need to remain anonymous, you can contact Crime Stoppers at 208-343-COPS. That's 208-343-2677.
a reward of nearly $53,000 is being offered for Michael's return. Since 2015, we have always run limited commercial ads for the benefit of you, the viewers, and the families that we're trying to help. Obviously, we can't do that without support. A big thank you to new patron, Megan Flannery. If you'd like to help, please visit lordandarts.com. There you can sign up for Patreon, sign up for PayPal, buy merchandise, or even just buy us a coffee like Roxanne Brown recently did. We really appreciate your support on our mission to run as few ads as possible while we help as many cases as we can. Thank you to ktvb.com, idahonews.com, the New York Post, okcfox.com, missingkids.org, the sun.com, fruitland.org, the idahopress.com, kivitv.com, kmvt.com, argusobserver.com, yahoo.com, and of course Wikipedia for information contributing to today's case. Also, a very big thank you to that community. What a caring community, that search effort is inspiring to hear about and heartbreaking at the same time, especially knowing the conditions of this case. And it just really seems like this was a crime of opportunity. A little boy goes wandering, someone sees that and takes advantage of it. So I just wanna really thank this community for rallying around this family in the way that you guys are. It's, it's amazing. Let's all keep our eyes, ears, and hearts open and looking for Michael Joseph Vaughn, looking for monkey. I'll see you again here soon on the Lord and Arch channel.